Okay, in this problem, uh, we're given that f of x, or f equals f of x is a real continuous differentiable function, and p is a point on the level set um, e where f is equal to c. And we want to explain why the chain rule, or so first we want to explain um, what a tangent vector to e at p means, and then we want to explain why the chain rule implies that such a tangent vector is perpendicular to the gradient vector of f at p. Okay, so first to explain um, what a tangent vector to e at p means, um, it means that so we have some level set um, e and we have a tangent vector to it. So that means that by definition there is some path that's within that level set or some continuously differentiable function within that uh, level set where um, and we can, we can call that path or that continuously differentiable function r of t and we know that this path or this continuously differentiable function at t equals zero is p. So, so r of zero is our point. And then our vector, our tangent vector, is actually what is the derivative of r at zero. So our velocity vector, so if a particle was moving along that um, path or that continuously differentiable function on the level set, the velocity that it would be moving at at the point P is given by our tangent vector there. And so we want to know what how this implies that um, given a vector that's tangent, how does that imply that the vector is perpendicular to the gradient of f at p. Well, we know that, so given some function f of r of t, we know that r of t is all within our level set. So any point uh, along this continuously differentiable function r of t will yield a point in the level set which is given as equals c. And then we also know that f of p is in the level set. So that's oh, equal to c as well. So we can let f of r of t equal f of, t, f of p for all t. And if we take the derivative using the chain rule, the left hand side is the gradient vector of f of r of t dotted with r prime of t. And we'll just let f of p be the constant c. So that derivative is just zero. So now we sort of are in the form that we want, we're looking for, but um, we want this to be the gradient of f at p, but we know that by definition, r of zero is p. So if we let t equal zero, then the gradient of f of r of zero is f of p divided with r prime of zero is equal to zero. And so now we have r prime of zero, which is our velocity vector v, or our tangent vector. So we have
the gradient vector of f at p dotted with v is equal to zero, which implies that v is perpendicular. To the gradient vector of f at p. So we've seen, so we now know what, how the chain rule comes into effect in order to show that a tangent vector is perpendicular to the gradient vector of f at p.